Oh my god, I just made a QSO through the ISS, a voice QSO. Haha! <laughs> KG4 AKD. KG4 AKD A5 PK. A5 PK, this is Kilo Golf 4, Alpha Kilo Victor. What's up, KG4 AKB, Delta Mike 91 here. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. KG4 AKV, Whiskey 5, Papa Fox Trot Golf, and Echo Mike 21. W5 PFG. Hey Clayton, it's John. KG4 AKV, Fox Mike 05. Okay, sounds good in Texas, John. 73 W5 PFG. That was ridiculous! <laughs> I don't know if you realize it, but I just made a QSO through the ISS crossband repeater on a 0.9 degree max elevation pass. That's amazing. AC0RA, KG4 AKV. KG4 AKV, AC0RA, you have call one. Fox Mike 05. Thanks, so through. November 8, Hotel Mike. KG4 AKV, you're a little scratchy, but I got gotcha. you. Yes, KG4 AKV, FM05. You need to adjust for Doppler center frequency, maybe. KG4 AKV, gotcha though. What's up? I'm John Breyer, KG4 AKV, and I just want to explain what just happened, why I'm so excited, and everything else. Okay, I'm a ham radio operator or amateur radio operator. My call sign is KG4 AKV or Kilo Golf 4 Alpha Kilo Victor. Ham radio operators are hobbyists who use a non-commercial radio service, ham radio, to communicate with each other. We can do all kinds of things in ham radio from using shortwave frequencies to talk all over the world to using frequencies to transmit high-speed digital data. In this case, we were operating through satellites. And you may have wondered exactly what we were talking about, what we were saying, the protocol. Let me explain. All right, I'm KG4AKV. And to communicate through a satellite, I'll say my call sign, KG4AKV or Kilo Golf 4 Alpha Kilo Victor phonetically. And somebody listening will say, okay, KG4AKV is there. I'm going to call him. And they'll say my call sign, KG4AKV. And they'll say their call sign, W5PFG. And then I know W5PFG just called me. He said my call sign. He said my name. And I'll respond to him by saying W5PFG. This is KG4AKV. And I might not even say, this is KG4AKV. It might just go like this, KG4AKV, W5PFG. And I'll return by saying, W5PFG, KG4AKV. And we have just made a contact. That's all you need at a minimal level to make a contact. Now, there are things that we added in there because this is satellite communications. You may have noticed me say, Fox Mike 05. Or FM 05 without phonetics. That's my grid square. All over the world, there are little teeny squares that represent a single area of the Earth. And with these grid squares, we exchange them to tell each other where we're located. And another reason we exchange them is because we can accumulate different contacts and different grid squares and get awards. So if we get a certain number of grids, for example, 100, we can get an award like the VUCC or VHF UHF Century Club. All ham radio modes do not necessarily use grid squares. For example, shortwave communications, because they cover such a large area, the whole Earth, compared to satellites, which only cover part of the Earth, they don't use them, they use cities and countries, for example. So that's why we use them, and that's what you'll hear. For example, you might hear Echo November 21. I can't remember where W5PFG is located. He's in the state of Texas. I'm in the state of North Carolina. Okay, so you know that we're working through satellites. We're doing space communications. How does that work, you might ask. Okay, so there's a satellite, sat, right there, okay? And there's people. There's another 
right here. KG4 AKV, W5 PFG. And we want to talk to each other. Okay, well the Earth is like this, it's curved. With the frequencies that we're using, you can't talk through the Earth like that, it doesn't work. But there's a satellite here. So we transmit on one frequency to the satellite, that's called the uplink. And the satellite simultaneously retransmits on another frequency, that's called the downlink. And this way we're able to communicate with each other despite the fact that the frequencies we're using normally uh, cannot get through obstructions like the Earth. Okay, that's why we use satellites. Okay, now you understand a little bit about ham radio, about ham radio space communications and how we make contacts through ham radio space communications modes. Let's talk about why I was so excited to make this contact and exactly how it worked, the particular satellite I was working through. You may have heard me mention the International Space Station at the beginning of the video. That's correct. I was actually operating through a voice repeater in the International Space Station. There has been a voice repeater in the International Space Station for several years, but it has not been activated for several years. And at the time that it was activated, I was not using ham radio at all. I was dormant in that hobby. But it was activated just for this uh, short period that this video was taken, a couple of days, because of something called Tomsk, T-O-M-S-K. Tomsk is a university in Russia. It's a polytechnic institute and they were celebrating one of their anniversaries. To do this, they built a satellite called TP120, which sent out messages, recorded messages in multiple languages, talking about their anniversary. It was just a greeting to Earth. It was very nice. In orbit. 2016 is the year of the 55th anniversary of the first manned flight into space. We, students of Tomsk Polytech University, have greatly contributed to the development of astronautics. Send a warm greeting to everyone who can hear us. On the air, this is a small spacecraft, a satellite which we have assembled with our own hands and dedicated to the 120th anniversary of our university. We wish all people of the planet peace and happiness. And to those who are exploring the vastness of the universe, astronomical achievements. Now, that satellite has not been launched yet. It was sent to the International Space Station and it will be launched by hand in the future. But they wanted to go ahead and turn it on. And they turned it on, they hooked it up to an external antenna on the International Space Station, and it transmitted on its frequency with some small power. The ISS voice repeater its uplink actually um, happened to be the same frequency that Tomps transmitted on. So they had Tomps transmitting from the International Space Station on its frequency, and they also enabled the ISS voice repeater. So it took Tomps as an input and retransmitted it as an output. But they set that up using antennas on the ISS such that anybody could transmit on the same frequency that Tomps transmitted on and get repeated through the ISS voice repeater. So between these transmissions, these recorded messages, there were opportunities for ham radio operators to communicate with each other. And that's exactly what happened. And the reason this video is called Tomsk uh, ISS uh, Bandit Repeater is because we actually weren't supposed to do that. And the reason is we, we didn't want to have people transmitting at the same time as the Tomsk recorded messages. But we were all very, fairly advanced or experienced satellite operators, and we knew not to do that. So we took a little um, discretion of our own to do that. And nobody lost. The recorded messages were still transmitted, and we gained the ability to communicate with each other through the ISS voice repeater, which wasn't possible to do for many years and won't probably be possible to do for many years to come. So that's, that's it. That's why this was so fun. That's why I was so excited because I was listening to these recorded messages and just planning on listening and all of a sudden I heard somebody talking through the repeater. I understood that could happen and I happened to have my radio configured to where I could do that. Not completely, but I was able to configure it uh, while the pass was happening and to make contacts with some ham radio operators. If you have any more questions, please put a comment in the video below. I really appreciate you watching this. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. If you really liked it, please share the video on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever you're most active on social media. 
And if you really, really liked it, please consider signing up on my Patreon website to send me a small sum every time I release a video. I'm releasing videos every Wednesday and they're just getting better and better and it's because of your support that they can get better and better. So once again, thanks for watching. I'm John Breyer, KG4AKB73.